Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of solid state electronic devices. Here we discussed a module named semiconductor physics. So more specifically, we'll be talking about charge carriers, drift velocity, intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors, carrier concentration and diffusion. In solid substances, electricity is conducted with the help of charge carriers. These are nothing but free electrons which move and transfer electric charge from one place to another. That is from lower potential to the higher potential. At zero Kelvin, no thermal energy is there. So electrons remain in the valence band. As the temperature increases, these electrons gain sufficient kinetic energy to cross the energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band and move to the conduction band. Once the energy reaches the level of the conduction, these electrons move in bulk and conduct charge. So based on the charge carrier concentration, solid substances can be metals, semiconductors or insulators. Metals are nothing but the electrons in this are the only charge carriers present and the concentration of the charge carriers in metal is very very high because of the overlapping between the valence band and the conduction band. Semiconductors in this the concentration depends upon the energy gap between these two bands whereas in insulators the gap is too high for electrons to jump into the conduction band from the valence band. Therefore, the insulators do not conduct electricity. At room temperature, these electrons that are conducting moves randomly inside the conductor. Their motion is like the gas molecules. Since in conductor, large number of electrons move randomly. Therefore, they do not have a net motion in any particular direction. Hence, no current is generated. As we apply some potential difference between the two ends of the conductor with the help of the battery, as it can be seen in figure B, the electric field is set up inside the conductor and the electrons drift slowly along the length of the conductor from lower potential to the higher potential. An external force accelerates the motion of these electrons inside the conductor. Drift velocity. The small velocity imposed on random motion of electrons in a conductor on application of the electric field is known as a drift velocity. It is also defined as the velocity with which the free electrons get drifted towards positive end of the conductor under the influence of externally applied electric field. So the drift velocity of the electrons can be given by Vd which is equal to small e capital E over m into tau where tau is the average time between the successive collisions. Small e is nothing but the amount of the charges on electrons and small m is the mass of electron. The relation between the drift velocity and the current density where current density is denoted by j. It is the total flow of the charge per time over a cross section area A is current density. So delta Q can be given by N E A V D delta T where N is a free electrons per unit volume. V D is a drift velocity. Delta T is a time interval. So from the equation V D delta T is nothing but the distance N A Vd delta T can be considered as the volume. Therefore, the number of free electrons here in this portion will be small n times the volume that is small n times A V D delta T. The current density J is I over A, the current over the area, which is N E V D. So J is the total flow of charge per time over cross section area A which is expressed in terms of the drift velocity by the above equation. 
Now we move forward to the charge carriers in semiconductors. In semiconductor, the concentration of charge carriers depend on the energy gap between the two bands, that is the valence band and the conduction band. When the electrons leave the valence band, it leaves behind a positively charged vacancy referred as the hole. Holes are mobile in the valence band and electrons and its corresponding vacancy in the valence band collectively form electron hole pair. Hence semiconductors have two types of charge carriers that is electrons in conduction band and holes in valence band. Intrinsic semiconductor is the one which is purely composed of only one type of the element and is free from any defects or impurities. The electrons and holes are always present in pairs. These are generated, electron hole pairs are generated by the thermal agitation and they both have all they both always have the same concentration that is NP is equal to Ne. Whereas in extrinsic semiconductor the case is different. So apart from the thermal agitation it is possible to generate electrons and holes by process of the doping. Doping is a process in which the impurities are added in a substance. Such semiconductors are known as extrinsic semiconductors and they exhibit greater conductivity than the intrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductors can be further classified as n-type and p-type. n-type semiconductors are doped by infusing a small amount of donor element. Donor elements are the element with the five valence electrons. Hence, the n-type semiconductors have excess of electrons in them. Whereas the p-type semiconductors lack the number of electrons. They are doped by infusing a small amount of acceptor element with three valence electrons. Hence the p-type semiconductors have excess of holes. The process of infusing the impurities in a semiconductor in order to increase its charge carrier concentration and therefore increase the conductivity is the process of diffusion. Because of this, electrons start moving from the region of the high concentration to the region of low concentration. This process of diffusion plays an important role in semiconductor physics.